Well, now to other world news, and Denmark has veered to the right in an election which brought defeat for its first female prime minister. Well, Helle Torning smith standing down as her center-left bloc lost out to the center-right opposition. But it was the performance of the populist Danish People's Party that raised the most eyebrows. Malcolm Brabant has more on that. What's the surprise is the extent of the Danish People's Party's success. Nobody really anticipated that. And the reason is that, very much like you saw in Britain, where you had shy conservatives, people who weren't prepared to admit to um, the pollsters that they supported the Conservative Party, you got the same thing here. People don't want to tell the pollsters who they're voting for, but in the privacy of the voting booth, they put their cross against the mark of the Danish People's Party. And that's what's happened here. And um, so, so they are now the most influential party. And what's extraordinary uh, to my, many people will be that it, although they are the most influential um, outfit in Parliament now, they, they are not seeking to form the government. What they are doing is that saying that they will support the, the Liberal leader, Lars Lukas Rasmussen, as he attempts to form a government. And the reason they're doing that is that they believe that uh, they can actually have more influence if um, they're on the outside looking in and they can, uh, you know, crack the whip. And they've already shown that they've got the, this sort of influence because... They secured an agreement between all of the right-wing parties that what they would do would be to try to support David Cameron in Britain as he tries to get more people to disengage from Brussels and for there to be more autonomy for European states and less dictation, dictation from Brussels.